What is going on, everybody? My name is Connor. Welcome. I'm Jody. <laughs> what? How about this? Hey, everybody, welcome. Best friend of the week. Happy Wednesday. My name is Connor. I'm Jody. <laughs> We're back in the middle school. It's my favorite place to be. What is up, everybody? Hey, welcome Wednesday night group life. It is the best night of the, the best. Week. My name's Connor. I'm Jody. We are back in my favorite space, the MSM room. I've missed it. Remember back in the day when we actually used to like gather in a room that is together? So long ago. It's Do a little bit so of singing together. Nice being back in here. So, so excited. Good. But we've got some things coming up for you guys first. Yes, hey, we have a few different ideas for things that we could be doing this summer, some summer activities, and we want to know your thoughts. So be sure to be checking our Student Ministries Instagram. We're gonna have a, a poll on there. We want to know what of these ideas that you love uh, for some activities that we got going on this summer. So be sure to check the poll, vote, cast your interest, and uh, yeah, we'll let you know what we have. And then we've been talking about faith in an anxious world, and tonight Victoria is going to be wrapping up our series, and we are talking about how to have hope in these times. So it's going to be a good night together. We'll see you later. Yeah, we'll see you soon. You were supposed to say that I'm leading a game. Oh, shit! <laughs> Face behind this mask. 
Just open her tongue out. I have a theory. The mask is going a little deep, so I'm gonna say it's so funny. What do you I'm say? <laughs> open. But the answer is. <laughs> hey, oh, it's it's tongue. Tongue what is happening? This is rigged. You're out. It's Connor, no. you're up. Guys, you know how good, you know how good it feels to talk to a real life human being right now. This feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You're trash. Really? I can say that to your face. This feels so good. Well, <laughs> All right, next we get question. to pee together, but right. it also feels good to win. So, right. who's this? What will we discover on Brad Pitt's face behind the mask? I love, I love Brad Pitt. Is he a clean shaver? A beard? Or I'm a going. mustache? I'm going, yes. I'm going, I'm going stash. Oh, I'm going gosh, beard. I'm going full beard. My answer is... Dang it! Ah, this game's good! Sachin is in the lead good. at this Come on, point. he's good. Alright, Fee, welcome back. Oh, this would be so much more fun if I could beat a middle schooler at it. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But they would beat you. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay, <laughs> how many teeth will be missing in this kid when oh. we remove the mask? Oh. This is a good one. One, two, or four? I'm using a lifeline, Neely, what do you think? I'll be you. Alright, that's a B. <laughs> oh, we both are. Oh, you want B? Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna switch it up then. I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna say uh, Okay. Oh. <laughs> the answer is two. I thought that you're out. Yeah, I, I feel like I can be sure. pretty harsh. Yeah. Such a right, see ya, oh. Neely, like back up. Basically lost. Forever. Okay, what are your bets on? My bets are on Victoria. Okay. Point. I feel pressure now. <laughs> Next question is, what type of mouth does this emoji have? Right, I'm gonna make really to mine. Straight face, half I'm say no mouth. No mouth. Oh! You oh! showed you. She got it. You showed you. Yeah. I don't like. I don't like to be put down. Nobody keeps baby in the corner. What you got? <laughs> okay. Okay. You guys, Connor, Neely, pull off the mask, and what will you find in this dog's mouth? Oh, a biscuit, uh, a bird, or a pacifier? Oh, I want it to be this. I want it to be a pacifier. Yeah, it is. It's for sure. What is it? Yeah! I got one. Let's go. Good job. All right, we got another one. Sachin's back. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to be my own hype oh, man. It didn't work. What, it didn't work. what topping is right. missing is behind the mask of this oh, deluxe God. cheeseburger. Yeah, it has to be. Mayo, bacon, or an oh. onion. Bacon. Yeah, come on. Who puts onions on a burger? That's nasty. No, it's bacon. No, it's bacon. Right. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, it's bacon. No, it's bacon. It's bacon. It bacon. Right, right. Though there's no bacon in the photo. There is yeah. no bacon <laughs> there. What topping is missing? You guys. Oh! oh. <laughs> you no. all lose. No, I win. Oh, no. All right. That's it. Wait, who was keeping track? Okay, you guys. I think it's between Sachin and Victoria, so maybe go cast your votes in small group. Cast it on the gram. Who do you think the real winner is? But the good thing is, everybody belongs always. So, we're going to go into a time of worship now. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to go, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> hey friends, and welcome to our SM Art Exposition. Year after year after year, when we see your art, obviously we visit the Lourdes, an amazing museum all across the world. We all travel over there for amazing things, but COVID and we can't be in crowds like that. But this is the type of crowd that your art deserves absolutely 100% hands down. So uh, I want to, us to take a moment and see four amazing submissions from different students that, that participated and, and gave us great pieces of art. And so here we go, let's get going. This first one is from Macy and and this is amazing geometric, maybe some abstraction. I see, I see some hope in these greens and some purple. Like it, it's just, this is this reminds me of springtime, summer vibes, and I love it. Thank you, Macy, for your submission. Um, I, I've I've seen things like chalk, but this is in paint, and so this is gonna stay forever, and that is the best because we love to look at it. And the next one, this is a paper cranes on a hanger. I think that, and this one's from Raina. Thank you so much, Raina, for the submission. Um, I love how evenly spaced out these paper cranes are, um, and I'm not someone that with my big fingers can do origami, but I'm so impressed by you who can. So well done, and thank you so much for sharing with us. 
Uh, this has been really, really, really cool. Uh, the next one, this is from Sydney, and Sydney made an incredible piece of art where she um, did this ballerina, she did a couple of them, but this is just one of them. And, and here she uses a couple different mediums, so she uses glitter and paint to really give this thing some sparkle uh, for this ballerina and for this dancer. So thank you so much, Sydney. This is real dope. Okay, and this last one, this last one is from a student, Kenzie, and Kenzie slayed it here with this piece. Uh, you can actually even see her little signature, and this is a digital rendering, and uh, obviously these are these are inspired by the lights in HSM and SM, um, but um, I love these posters, I love this, Kenzie. Thank you so much for all of your work, and all of you who have done art in this time, uh, please keep on sharing it. They might not make it into our annual expo at the Louvre, but it's been really, really fun to look at your pieces of art. And and uh, take care. Hey SM, we're gonna enter into a time of worshiping together. And I encourage you to just make some space in your thoughts and in your heart to hear what Jesus might be speaking to you. I encourage you to sing along and to just engage with what Jesus might want for you. With every breath, with every word I speak, with every step, with every heartbeat, Jesus said it before you, for you only, my whole life, all for your glory, all for your glory.
Sometimes it would make me feel uncomfortable to take deep breaths because I wasn't used to even doing that. So people would be like, breathe deeply. And I'd be like, this makes me feel worse <laughs> at first because I just wasn't used to it. It wasn't something I naturally did, but like something I practiced doing, which now when I feel anxious, I'm able to say, oh, I have to take deep breaths. 
Learning to respond to anxiety well is like learning an instrument or learning a sport. It takes practice during times when the pressure is off. We can practice breathing, daily prayers of gratitude, talking with caring adults, or even talking with our parents. When we take time to practice, it makes us ready for game day, ready for the performance, ready for the day of the test, or the day when friendships seem to crumble, so that when the alarm goes off, we're ready to respond. First of all, I have a notebook that I've been writing in since I was in the fourth grade, and it's helped me a lot. Being very active helps, like, it, like your mind disappears. It's just you and the body it helps a lot. Try to stay away from social media, possibly, because it's it might, I don't know, trigger something else. I'll make tea. Tea helps me a lot. There's, like, something about music that helps a lot. I like to turn to um, God, for instance. Um, we basically just get a one-on-one -on -one conversation I just let my, all my feelings out. I really have no, really no way of doing it. You just talk. To just kind of pinpoint the physical aspects of things, like am I getting antsy? And just to like notice those little signifiers like that, you start to see what it is that makes you anxious um, and you find your boundaries. And then you can start to stretch those boundaries. If the first thing you find or if what someone suggests to you doesn't work, that doesn't mean like that's the only thing that can be helpful. You should keep looking and keep trying to find something until you find something that clicks for you. People are a good way to kind of like get you out of your own head with anxiety. It's still a little story about my friend who was in the car and we're in traffic and he just started feeling anxious and, and he just started getting that feeling. And I was like, I know exactly how you feel. Um, how can how can you feel better now? Like, would this help? Would this help? Would this help? And then he's like, oh, that would actually help, you know? So we one of the things that happened to him, we pulled over and he got out and, and started walking. And that was one of the things that I had mentioned that. And he didn't think about that because he was just feeling anxious, you know? So knowing those feelings, I, I listed a few things that could probably help. And he just picked one and that actually did help. So that was good that I was there. <laughs> Because before I've told someone that I was having a hard time and they were like, oh, I was having a hard time and I never told anyone that either. And so you could be helping someone else by being the one who talked to them in the first place, you know? So you're not only helping yourself, but other people around you. Like even just this conversation that we're having right now is encouraging to me because I would not have been able to say those things like two years ago. And now being able to like, verbalize and articulate, you know, certain things that make me anxious, like different things that I can do. We can really figure out what we need to work on and how strong we are. Like, you're stronger than you realize. Um, and just one day at a time, one step at a time. Hi friends, Dre here. I'm so excited to talk to you tonight to continue our series about having faith in an anxious world. For me, I definitely struggle with anxiety, like all the time, especially in the past few months. See, I like everything to be perfect. I like to plan things out and put things in their perfect little boxes. And when that doesn't work out, which is a lot, I get super freaked out and upset. And over the years as a Christian, I've had to start to learn that even though I worship a perfect God, life itself is really unperfect and messy. But that messiness and my struggle with it doesn't mean that I can't do amazing things with God, even if I'm struggling or stressed out in the middle. What I've been learning, and maybe you are too, is that God doesn't ask for our perfection, just our participation in his work. And we're gonna explore that idea tonight. First, a little recap. Last week, we read a story about Jesus healing two people. You might remember that in the crowd, that the, the story was very busy with lots of people. And people did not seem to understand why Jesus would stop for a woman who had been sick and alone for years or for a girl who's already dead. And this week we're going to read a much different miracle that have a lot more people involved. We're going to read about the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but basically Jesus and his disciples had been spread out all over the land, going out and teaching and telling people about Jesus and, and performing miracles out there. And now they're just coming back all together after this journey and kind of kind of reconvening their group. So let's read in Mark chapter six what's going on. In the Bible it says, the apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all about what they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could just be alone. 
But many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw this huge crowd as he stepped off the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. And late into the afternoon, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, you feed them. With what, they ask. We have to work for months to earn enough money to buy all the food for all these people. Well, how much bread do you have, he asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass so they sat down in groups of 50 or 100, and Jesus took out the five loaves and two fish, and he looked up towards the heaven, and he blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish up for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. Wow. So a little recap. There was this huge hungry crowd and Jesus wanted the disciples to feed them, but they had very little food or money themselves to feed themselves. So with only five loaves of bread and two fish, Jesus commands them to use that to happily feed 5,000 people. Yikes, can you like imagine the stress and confusion the disciples might have felt in that moment? Not to mention these disciples were hungry and tired and worn out themselves from a very hard season. They're coming out of a huge journey and season of difficulty. But it's clear that Jesus had no intention of performing this miracle alone. He wanted to do it through his very tired, worn out, and confused disciples, right? In the scripture, it said that Jesus said, you feed them. Now, what's great about this story is that Jesus didn't just give them an important job and just walk away, or he didn't condemn or yell at his disciples when they stood there shocked or confused. Jesus still gave them an important task, but he stayed present with them while they did it, and he helped them do it. But this brings up a good question that I want us to ponder that I think is at the heart of this message. I want you to think about this. Why do you think Jesus just didn't perform the miracle himself? Why didn't he just do it? Surely it would have been faster, more amazing, less confusing and stressful. Take a minute and think about that. Why did Jesus choose to perform this miracle with his disciples? Let's think about it. Maybe you came up with some good answers. While we don't know for sure why Jesus didn't just feed the crowd himself, we can see throughout the Gospels and the book of Acts that Jesus' strategy to spread his message and miracles included teaching us to do what he did and gifting us with the Holy Spirit. And through this story, we can see that with this small group of disciples, Jesus was growing a circle whose purpose wasn't just to take care of themselves. Ultimately, the circle, the disciples, were being equipped to go and do what Jesus did helping others to know and experience his peace and love as well. And in the midst of their own insecurities and anxieties and imperfections, and even when they were tired and hungry and anxious, they had the opportunity to pass on God's power. But guys, we live in the same reality right now. God is ready to use us to create change in this world. But sometimes we let our fears and anxieties and insecurities get in the way. And that's normal. The disciples almost did too. But the call is for us to push past that. Because Jesus didn't ask for perfection from the disciples. What he asked for and what he needed was their trust. Jesus didn't ask for their perfection. He asked for their trust. And we can confidently push back our own hang-ups and trust God because of some truths. And the first truth is this. We are made in God's image. The disciples were able to perform a miracle because of Christ's power through them. We are also made in his image. FYI, everyone on earth is made in the image of God. So that same power from him can be used in us because we are made in God's image and we are always going to be connected to him. Second truth is we are made to know God. We can also see this in the story of the disciples, that we were made to know God. When we're focused on listening to God, this pressure to do everything just right or be perfect suddenly doesn't matter so much. We are made to know God. And finally, number three, we are made to know others. Through the story, we can see that we are meant to be connected with others. It was when the disciples worked together as a team that actually enabled them to offer help and hope to those around them and perform a miracle. Because we are our healthiest and our most powerful when we really see each other and begin working with one another. We are made to know and work with others. 
Friends, what a better time than right now to hear these truths. Right now, the world needs Jesus. Right now, the world needs to remember that all people bear the image of God. Right now, the world needs you. You. The world needs people like you connected to God with the radical love of Jesus flowing through you to go out into the world and make a difference. And I know it can be scary or intimidating, and so often our insecurities and fears and anxiety gets in the way. And those things are understandable, and we honor them, and it's okay. But remember, God isn't asking us to be the perfect people, and then once we're perfect, he can show up and move in and use us. Now, rather, he wants to use us right now in our, in our imperfections, because of our imperfections, to make big things happen. Are you on board? We love you. Jesus loves you. We believe in you, and so does he. Have a good night, SM.